السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ladies and gentlemen let's continue our tutorials about HVAC system we'll come back again to uh, hourly analysis program in this video we're gonna complete our energy analysis uh, project or uh, uh, steps uh, here uh, the uh, the air handling unit and the uh, chillers Actually, we're gonna talk about the uh, chiller. So let's open 4.9. Uh, the previous tutorial about air energy analysis, we talked about uh, the equipment tab here in the systems. We have talked about equipment tab uh, for the uh, energy analysis and the systems that are available we have talked about all these okay so what if uh, the uh, project has uh, chillers or water chillers so we have to define new chillers okay so, uh, you know that uh, our Revit tutorials, we stopped at uh, an introduction to the piping uh, system and this is a good chance to uh, talk about the chiller uh, and the piping. Here we have the air handling unit and we have uh, the chillers, but this is for the project of Revit, okay. Uh, According to the uh, cooling loads or the total cooling loads of the plant, uh, we have to decide uh, the capacity of the chillers. Suppose that we have here, uh, notice that this project is not uh, this project. Okay, for example, we have defined the plant and here are the chillers. And here, ch generic chilled water plant, and here we have the two systems. So, right click and print view design results, cooling loads. Okay, have here only cooling loads. So, uh, the maximum uh, plant load uh, 54.9. Kilowatts, uh, the submission of uh, AHU1 and AHU011, uh, okay, for the corridors and the other uh, things. I'm sorry, uh, there is no corridors here, okay. Uh, so, this is the 54.9 kilowatts, the maximum plant load. This is the capacity of the chillers that we have to uh, choose. So, suppose that uh, there is a chiller. Uh, with this capacity or more than this capacity so you can use one chiller if there is no chillers or the uh, capacity is very high here suppose it is uh, 500 kilowatts so you may use more than one, one chiller and in that case uh, we're gonna uh, define uh, one chiller in the uh, library project project library here okay so uh, this is the uh, mole of uh, the Revit project here are the air handling unit and here are the chillers uh, we're gonna talk about this in the next tutorials about Revit and piping design to know how to choose the chillers uh, the number of them and the piping uh, system of the chillers and the air handling is very important to know this to complete our project so here is the basics of the chiller somehow you may find the cooling tower for the high uh, capacity plants okay but it's not a rule as you see a boiler and a chiller and you may find the cooling tower and many uh, details in HVAC absorption chiller versus the electric chiller compression chiller there are many kind of chillers and many uh, designs 
okay now here we have to uh, know the shape and you can uh, search uh, on youtube about the chiller and how to yeah, install them at the site okay we're gonna uh, talk about these details uh, in the tutorial the next tutorials about Revit so So if your uh, total capacity of cooling load is uh, suppose that is uh, 500 kilowatts and you need uh, more than one chiller uh, suppose that you need uh, two chillers uh, so uh, you have to define a, two, a 250 kilowatt chiller here not the total okay so open this Uh, here is the uh, name of the chiller uh, as you want you can name it and here the equipment function you can choose uh, chiller uh, chilled water only uh, if there is uh, a cooling uh, water only for cooling or reversible uh, hot, uh, hot, uh, hot or uh, chilled water for heating and cooling or a heat pump for hot water only also can click F1 for more details in the equipment function a chiller which produces uh, chilled water only in uh, certain uh, cases heat recovery equipment such as a double bundle condenser uh, the uh, superheater uh, or a heat recovery condenser for air cooled chillers can be added so the chiller simultaneously produces chilled and hot water to serve uh, building loads. Uh, a reversible uh, chiller which produces chilled water in cooling mode and produces hot water in heating mode. A heat pump which produces hot water only. Okay. So the choice of equipment function will affect the equipment types that are offered in the next input. And the input items which appear in, uh, on the design inputs and the performance steps. So please, please be careful when you uh, choose this. Here we have uh, the equipment type. We have, we are going to find... Uh, we choose chilled water. We we'll find many uh, equipment types. Okay, uh, water cool WC centrifugal, WC rotary screw, WC packaged screw, WC packaged reciprocating, WC packaged scroll, WC single effect absorption, WC double effect absorption, direct uh, fired absorption, engine chiller. And all of these are water cooled, and three types are air cooled package screw, air cooled package reciprocating, air cooled package scroll. So, water cooled. chiller you can uh, see many uh, photos or images for this device okay and uh, screw also there are centrifugal This uh, the function uh, of these chillers are different according to the internal design. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna leave you uh, to these details. You have to uh, know exactly what equipment you need. Also, you can click F1. And then equipment function, equipment type, or you can find all uh, the information you need here, okay.
and here uh, notice that if you choose hot you'll find water water source screw scroll and air source and if you use heat pump you'll find water source a screw scroll and air source so there are many uh, uh, types uh, equipment type and here so you have equipment function and the equipment type okay and here are uh, any notes that you want to uh, type uh, the model of the uh, chiller any other uh, additional data so of course uh, this data will appear only in the input uh, as input data uh, for the report okay for the design inputs is very important so the fluid temperatures capacity input power uh, flow rates controls and features so the full load uh, LCHWT leaving cooled uh, uh, chiller uh, sorry here you have to get the notes and here are the design inputs for that this so the items uh, defines the leaving uh, chilled water temperature leaving chilled water uh, temperature for the chair at uh, its full load cooling design point okay the full load capacity and input uh, power specified on this tab are rated at this LCHWT in addition the performance map data uh, shown in the text in the next tab lists performance data rated at this LCHWT if a chiller is included in a plant which uses different design uh, LCHWT uh, or uses chilled water reset, then equipment performance will be adjusted to the new LCHWT using the correction factors found on the cooling performance step. So uh, I'm reading this now why to tell you that you have to read the details uh, about every input here uh, from the help to know what's going on and what if the scenarios that uh, are used in uh, HEP okay and the full load uh, ECWT we found here uh, the ECWT other than input Here the entering cold water temperature that uh, enter the uh, chiller, okay. So this is leaving the chiller. Of course, of course, it's gonna be uh, lower than the entering temperature, okay. So we have to determine this or specify this temperature. So full load LCHWT, uh, LCHWT, okay, and I have to navigate here to complete ECWT. Uh, this item uh, defines the entering condenser water temperature for the chiller at its full load cooling design point. The full load capacity and input power specified at this step are rated at this ECWT and you have to uh, read uh, for an air-cooled chiller with heat recovery condenser this input refers to the entering condenser water temperature for the chiller at full load design point when using the water-cooled heat recovery condenser for heat rejection so here are the full load and the full load uh, LC and EC okay For the capacity uh, tab, if you wanna auto size capacity, check this uh, option. Have uh, well calculate the total capacity of a chiller according to the uh, total capacity of the plant. Uh, as we said, uh, I think it was fifty four uh, kilowatts, something like this. If you need to uh, specify the full load capacity of the chiller 
of one chiller, you have to uh, define it. Suppose that there are two chillers and uh, the total is 500 kilowatts, so it's gonna be 250 kilowatts. So this is for full load capacity for one chiller. Also, we can read here equipment capacity can be defined in one of two ways. So auto size capacity for uh, preliminary uh, preliminary uh, uh, design or lead applications where it is necessary to have capacity automatically uh, determined. Place a check in the auto size uh, capacity box. During plant simulation calculations, the program will automatically uh, size the equipment based on peak plant load plus an oversizing factor specified in the plant inputs. In a multiple chiller plant or multiple heat pl pump plant, the plant inputs will also specify how plant capacity should be divided among individu individual equipment units. Okay, uh, 60 uh, 40 percent equally sized. User defined uh, capacity like this. For applications where the equipment capacity is known, leave the auto size capacity box unchecked and specify the full load capacity of the equipment. For the chillers, the cooling capacity is rated at full load LCHWT and entering condenser temperature ECWT, EACWT, or OAT. You can find this uh, here. Find all what you need here. Okay. Where is the capacity? You find it. So everything is here. Okay. And so on. For the input power, uh, you have to uh, input the full load power, the electrical uh, power that uh, will be used for this one chiller. Uh, you can use the uh, two units. This is for uh, one unit uh, cooling. Uh, you have to know how uh, much kilowatts electric that will be used if we, uh, for one kilowatt, I think, uh, cooling, okay? So, here, full load power. For chillers, full load power defines the chilled, the chiller input power rated at the full load LCHWT entering condenser and the full load capacity condition specified earlier in this step. When other size uh, capacity option is not selected, input power can be defined in as kW per ton, okay, kilowatt per ton, so or as uh, total kilowatt. So uh, here you have to uh, input the total kilowatt or this option. Uh, defined as uh, kilowatt per ton, okay, or as total kilowatt. To change the units of measure, select the desired units label in the drop down uh, list to the right of this input item. If all the size capacity is selected, the input power can only be defined as kilowatt per ton, okay. Notice. Yes. So the average operating loss also, if you know any average operating loss, you can use it here. Uh, percentage of, uh, so we have to here average compressor or other energy loss during operation, you can put it here. Okay, notice that uh, this is very important. For the flow rates, uh, flow rates, the chill water supply, uh, you have to cooler water supply flow rate, you have to determine it uh, according to the liter per second or liter per second per kilowatt cooling or the Kelvin, uh, the uh, difference between the uh, condenser temperatures. Okay, here the cooler water flow rate. Uh, 
as you see, let us get it. So chilled water supply fluoride here, fluoride here. Okay, this item to find the chilled water fluoride at the design condition flow can be specified in one of three ways. GBM or liter per second, the flow is defined directly. GBM per ton or liter per second per kilowatt. The program will calculate GBM automatically based on the full load cooling capacity. Or well, delta T. So this is delta T, okay, in Kelvins. Kelvin, the program will calculate GBM automatically based on the full load cooling capacity and the specified delta T, uh, the difference uh, between the temperatures of the condenser. Okay. Chilled water supply flow rate is used in chilled water distribution system calculations during a plant simulation. It's used in the calculation of uh, full load pump input power for both constant speed and variable speed pumping applications. For constant speed, constant flow applications, it defines the flow rate for all chiller operating hours. For variable speed applications, it helps establish the minimum flow level uh, for the chiller. For example, if minimum flow is defined as 70%, minimum flow is calculated as 70% of the cooler flow rate you specify here. So, gentlemen, please, uh, the delta T, I'm sorry, is not for the condenser, it is, of course, for the evaporator. The delta T of the uh, evaporator, you have to uh, determine it, and here the, as you know, this for the uh, condenser. As, like we said, now these are very important to know everything. Entering condenser water temperature, but the uh, here delta T water supply delta T okay, medical based on the full cooling capacity and the delta specified delta T of the uh, evaporator. Okay, the same thing is for the condenser uh, condenser water side flow rate. You can choose liter per second, liter per second per kilowatt, or Kelvin. Okay, condenser water side flow rate. So I think the delta T here is for the condenser, and here the delta T is for the evaporator. Okay, the cooler. Okay, uh, for the controls and features, you can uh, and uh, set the minimum uh, entering condenser water. Uh, temperature, the minimum entering condenser water temperature set point, uh, you have to determine it or specify it, and the minimum uh, load of the chiller uh, as a percentage. Heat recovery, if you uh, use any heat recovery, please uh, check out these uh, options, double bundle condenser or the super here, you can check out this uh, in the help or from the internet or any other source, if there is no heat recovery, you can choose not used. Notice that these design inputs uh, are uh, changed according to few here uh, reversible. Notice that there are two additional tabs heating mode flow temperatures, heating mode flow rates. Why? They here are hot and Chill. There is a heat pump. Only you find flow with temperature, flow rates, controls, and so no problem. But if there is heating and cooling, you have of course you will find the cooling mode and the heating mode. Also, if uh, here suppose that this is air cooled, you'll find here. Full load out outlet air 
temperature uh, you have to determine this outdoor air temperature okay also for the absorption we'll find here uh, the full load steam input you have to determine it okay and kilogram per second or kilogram per kilowatt hour so this full load steam input as a kilogram per second or kilogram kilowatt hour average operating uh, loss average compressor or other energy loss during operation uh, electric input okay for uh, these devices for these additional devices for the absorption devices and something like this and also the steam heat content for the uh, steam okay that is used in kilojoule pill per kilogram and your supply absorber condenser you will find here uh, cooler water side and here the absorber condenser for it as it is and here are the controls and features okay notice that there is no heat recovery there is no here recovery tab okay here for the performance tab we make it general and Google can get this uh, performance here the cooling mode sub tab on the uh, performance tab here the cooling performance tab defines the off design not the design it's off design and part load performance of a chiller or reversible chiller in cooling mode this tab contains five key key components described below okay the cooling performance table okay the cooling mode here input power in IKW per kilowatt I kilowatt so uh, the cooling performance table is, uh, is the upper of the two grids on the, this tab it contains input power data for off design and part load cooling conditions and this table each row contains performance data before uh, for a different uh, entering condenser temperature here okay uh, each column contains data different part load ratio for example in this sample screen image the input power for 75 uh, F entering condenser air temperature and 50% load is 1.056 kilowatt per ton where you can find here So here generally you have uh, ECWT according to uh, this data you find here the performance ECWT at the part load and here the input power at every ECWT there is a maximum capacity here and here is the 100% uh, and 90% and so on and here the condenser temperature 8 rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and part load uh, columns 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and you can change them performance LC uh, HWT factors this is a correcting fact coefficient for cooling performance uh, B for the cooling performance and here A coefficient for cooling capacity and B coefficient for cooling capacity you can get these from the catalog uh, of the chiller itself and here if at some point if you uncheck uh, the other size capacity you'll find here the another the other uh, schedule capacity in kilowatts and so on okay please uh, ladies and gentlemen you have to read carefully these uh, uh, lines uh, or the information they are they are very uh, it's very it's very important for you to uh, read these details and how you can use these schedules okay and you have to ask your senior engineer what's going on
So also for the reversible or hot pioneer design, okay. You can find the performance for the cooling mode and for the heating mode too. Okay, and we go input. I will check. We find here heating mode two schedules. For input power and the capacity. Input power and capacity. Okay. You can use the catalog of the chiller to input this data. And here are the factors. And here are the help. Okay. So what if if uh, you do not have all this information? We cannot enter this information. So what we have to do is go to general and open shell template. This is not accurate method for uh, entering the uh, data uh, for the chiller, but we have to do it uh, if we do not have the uh, enough information. But this is uh, available only for water cooled chillers, centrifugal rotary, screw package, screw package reciprocating. Okay, there is no uh, the other uh, types. So you have to enter the full load uh, LCHWT chiller. Uh, okay, and uh, the full load ECWT as we said. Uh, we defined this in the last couple of minutes. And the full load capacity of the chiller, uh, the volume chiller, and the full load power, electric power for the chiller, IKW per kilowatt or kilowatts, the total kilowatt for the one chiller. The minimum ECWT set point and the minimum load, the percentage of this chiller, and the number of part load details. It's four here for the schedule, the percentage load 100, 57, 50, quarter, 25 or 25. And here the performance, the ECWT at 100% load and the uh, IKW. Okay, you can enter this. There is six. Okay, you can. Uh, divide uh, the hundred percent by six as you like, okay or two. No, cannot do two. What about three? No, cannot do three. So the minimum is four, and here the five. From four to, I think to ten. Yes, you can uh, enter every. Thing, but you have to uh, make it 100 divided by uh, 10 is 10 so every uh, type here is 100 10% 10% 10% 10%, okay and so on no sorry I mean uh, 190 80 70, 60, and 50, and so on. 50, 40, uh, 30, uh, 20, 10. Okay, 40, yeah, let's do it. 30, 20, 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 10. And you have to enter uh, every uh, information here, every uh, data. Uh, the idol kW per kilowatt and ECWT entering uh, condenser uh, water uh, temperature or enter chilled uh, water temperature ECWT and click OK. OK. Also, can uh, import any information here for chiller data. You have it. Click OK. ECWT as we no. Okay, so the ECWT, as you uh, know, the entering condenser water temperature. Okay, please be careful when you uh, deal with uh, these 
uh, data to know uh, what is the meaning okay so after this you can close the help and now we have this uh, chiller okay chiller so we added uh, we have just added this chiller for the library to be used for the energy simulation okay thank you uh, very much gentlemen this is my end this is the end of my uh, tutorial about uh, def def defining the chillers for energy simulation in uh, hab please save the project okay the next tutorial we're gonna uh, talk about the definition of the boiler and the cooling towers uh, for the energy analysis uh, tutorials and for the reflect tutorials we're going to complete our piping design uh, we're going to talk about the details of the, uh, the piping design system for the chilled water and uh, for chillers and the air handling units and so on okay thank you very much